Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. This is everything you need to know about thumbnails. And it's not good. Let's start with YouTube. This is the place where most people come across thumbnails. This is the thumbnail that I made as a Photoshop file, saved as a JPEG and uploaded. It is not in the video file. Neither are these other ones. These thumbnails were just created by random frames in the video. None of these thumbnails are in the video. It looks like it is. It's an image in a location on a server. When, when you uh, see the page for this video, that server puts the image in front of you like a video. When you click on the image, it swaps out the picture for a video. And it's made to look like you clicked on a thumbnail and you watched the video for that thumbnail. You didn't. Two different things. They had nothing to do with each other. Let's go have a quick look on the desktop. If you're on the Finder, you'll find very much the same thing that I'm going to show you. So here in Windows Explorer, you'll see some of the videos. Now these are TIFF files. Some of the videos have thumbnails, some of them don't. These little cones are VLC files. So for uh, any computer, you can pick a program that will open your media files. By default on Windows, it's movies and images or whatever Microsoft gives you. Um, but I've switched to VLC, which you can get for both Mac and Windows. Uh, I, I think it's the, the ugliest icon in out there. I hate these little guys, but it's a great program because it plays almost anything. So these videos do not have thumbnails inside them. In fact, let's see if we can trigger some thumbnails. So I'll open up this folder here. And let's look at these as thumbnails and you'll see them start to draw. See that? What is happening is the operating system, and this would be the same on the Mac, the operating system looks at the file, it reads the file. First of all, it asks what the file is. Oh, the file is a .mov file or an MP4. And then it, it uses the right codec, which is a compressor decompressor that you happen to have running in your system. And then it uses that codec to look inside and grab a random frame probably close to the beginning, if not at the beginning. And now it gives you a thumbnail. That's why it took a moment to show these because they're not in here. To save memory, both Mac and Windows will try to save these in a cache. And this is where the, the, uh, the cache is on Windows. It's in your deep in your drive, in app data, local, Microsoft Windows Explorer. And, and this isn't stuff you should do anything with. Um, it's just a whole bunch of cached thumbnails um, that may or may not speed things up. In my case, I know I've opened this folder before, but you saw things redraw. So I don't think you should walk away when thinking, I'll open a folder, it'll draw the thumbnails and they'll be there forever. No, it's just, again, thumbnails, this is a lot of bad news. Will it have to redraw the thumbnails? I have no freaking idea. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So some of these are, are actual, these are thumbnail files created by me opening this in Bridge, which we'll have a look at in a second. So again, some of these file formats like this MXF notoriously will not show. Why? Well, because the codec for that file is not installed as part of the, the desktop operating system. So when you install Mac and Windows, they have a whole bunch of formats that they understand. There's no reason for um, your computer to understand broadcast video formats because Microsoft and Apple would have to license these codecs from these broadcast uh, media companies to install it to have less than 1% of the people using the computer to see it. So trying to see every single one of your previews on the desktop or the Finder ain't going to happen. Um, the next question that I get a lot is, well, how can I how can I make a thumbnail and stick it in there? You can't. You gotta remember that 
almost every one of these formats are owned by somebody else. And when those companies are making those formats, at no point do they think to themselves, boy, it sure would be great for consumers to be able to stick an image in this format. No, they're thinking, this is a broadcast format that needs to be reliable for the broadcast world. Thumbnails, pfft, I use a, in these big companies, they actually use an asset management system that actually makes the thumbnails for them in a proprietary database. So their users never see any of these little cones. They're just browsing files. They're using a very sophisticated six figure amazing system that makes thumbnails and it doesn't put them inside, it associates them. So you're not about to take a picture and stick it inside. Because if you think about it for a second, a regular HD 1920 by 1080, if you put that much data for one solid frame of uncompressed image inside there, where would it go in the video and how would it um, impact storage? So now you've got 10,000 video files with 10,000 uncompressed images inside. So your next uh, comment is probably, why, not, why compress? Why not, why uncompress? Why don't they compress that? because that's another format and that somebody else owns, that somebody else would have to license and update and format. It's a whole big bag of mess. So let's go look at these, the same folder, the, my footage folder in Bridge and look at there. Every single one of them is showing. And I can even see the MXF file right there. Why? Because Adobe licenses all of those formats for you. That's part of what you get when you get Creative Cloud. That MXF format was licensed by whoever made that format and the engineers at Adobe built that in Bridge, built that in into Premiere Pro, built that into After Effects so that you can work with and see and preview those files. The same thing with, with Premiere Pro. Let's open that same folder up. And you can see the, see the thumbnails took a moment to draw, but they're there. Now that is a WAV file, so that's still not showing up, but, but that makes perfect sense. And there's the MXF file. This is um, a white beginning, so that, that's not an error. So there's the MXF file. And you get the added benefit of hover scrub in, in Premiere Pro. So not only do I get to, to see that change when I mouse over it, some of these are TIFFs. That's a TIFF, which is a still image, a still image, that's a still image. This is for another test that I was doing. But any of the video file formats are going to play when I mouse over those formats. Now, one last thing I'm gonna show you is that I, I will imp import that same MXF file and look at it as a video. And what you can do is you can create, and I've got a whole tutorial on this, so if I wanted to set this as a poster frame, you can right click and choose set poster frame or hit shift P and that sets it as a poster frame. It doesn't mean I inserted an image in there as a thumbnail. It just means the preview is now being drawn from a specific part in the clip, a specific time code of that clip. That's all. That's something Premiere Pro can do easily uh, because it gives you a thumbnail regardless. You're just now picking a different thumbnail. Like I said, the end card will have um, a great tutorial on using these because sometimes your work, you import a bunch of stuff with black beginning and you can't really see it. You see a thumbnail, it's the beginning, but you want something later that will describe that. So. Good news in Premiere Pro that we can do things like this, but bad news for anyone else who just wants the Finder or the desktop on Windows full of thumbnails of, of videos. Uh, it ain't gonna happen because both Apple and Microsoft would, would have to license thousands of formats and install those. And again, the vast majority of computer users would never encounter these broadcast files. They're already getting previews from uh, H.264 MP4 files and most MOV files, so they don't really need it. All right, so there you go. If you're new to Video Revealed and you don't mind bad news like this, <laughs> take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that through PayPal. There's a link in the description on the front of the channel. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and I'm telling you all the good news and bad news to help you make it in this digital world.